So this one will be turned in this direction, right? Well, let me give you a piece of advice. Try to paint, to draw the outlines. I want this one to be turned at us. It is. Okay, so you just make the outline, the silhouette, and you should remember about this hard place where all petals are growing from. It's not just a point. Just keep it in mind. And also bear in mind the center line of the flower. Uh, the pivot. Uh -huh. Later, uh -huh. when we work with the paintbrush, uh, we will paint the, the petals from the edge to this point, and they all be gathered together in this uh, imaginary point. It will not be seen by the beholders. Don't make it them like clouds. Just kind of um, uh, at a guess. Just make uh, rough outlines of the flowers and then you, you will see them all. So you see this is the, the big flower, one big petal, another big petal. <coughs> and they're all gathered together in the center at the central point. You don't need to draw very tiny petals. Why do we need this for? To, to have a bright flowers, you have to leave canvas white. By the way, we have forgotten to cover it with oil. Well, anyway, uh, it just will be a little bit harder to work later on to, to apply the, the, the paintings. Mm -hmm. So, coming back to the flowers, when we have white, white background, we will have very, very bright and intense flowers. Well, if the flower, if the background is um, solid and dark, we would not reach this. Um, brightness, this clearness of colors. Well, uh, this one I see already, I imagine it in my head. It's enough for me to have the outline, just to see the final flower. You don't need to pay too much attention to the to the details. Just like kind of with shivering hand, you just mm, in a couple of movements you make the outline. You may even leave it like this. And later we will work it out till the end, and we'll finally have a mature, ragged, natural peony. But if you if you draw them kind of um, all round, you will have a plate flowers, flowers like plates. About this flower, uh, you can you can even uh, just put the the border of light and shades just to make it easier for you um, further on. So here's the light and over there you, you will draw the shadow. One more uh, thing, um, well, we, we have them all of the same size, it's not very good. We better make um, different uh, the flowers of different sizes. 
Здесь что-то маленькое можно нарисовать. Oh, it's, it's because of perspective, right? The, the closest one are bigger. Well, not, not only because of this, not exactly. Just we need to vary the painting. We, we should avoid homogeneous, homogeneous flowers. Another thing, you are um, you're drawing separated flowers, but they should overlap. Uh, you should not see uh, the background between the flowers. They, somewhere they should overlap each other, uh, cover each other, mm -hmm. so that they, uh, the bunch would be quite bushy. So here you'll have the leaf, for instance, here you'll have the flowers. Otherwise, you would have a kind of applied ornament. Uh, it is not very good. But if they overlap each other, you will have a natural bunch. One more thing I wanted to tell you. Any painting should have a kind of direction, so to avoid static. If we just um, cover all canvas with flowers, we will have a kind of carpet. Uh, so it's not good, again, it's ornament. What we have here now is the ascending diagonal. Uh, we may, well, the, there could be a ascending, descending direction. But we have ascending here. So, so that this part is empty. Um, upper left corner, I mean. And also don't cover with flowers the lower right corner, so that there is a movement, dynamics in the paintings. So you wanted the turned out flower. This one will look in that direction, in the right direction. <coughs> so later, when we work with paintbrush, we'll work out all the petals. Uh -huh. Well, just look at these peonies. We should decide what we have inside, what kind of color. Quite hot, uh, quite warm red color. Uh, it's rather intense, so you may take um, uh, some kind of alizarins. It's very strong and intense. And you may add some uh, oil in it, because we have a absolutely dry canvas. And you see that in the center it's quite dark, then you take the lighter color, and this undercoat will be a shed shade for us, uh, the shade from the petals itself. And here the, the tints are quite grayish, and we apply it on canvas. We just um, look up at the photo and trying to guess the color. We should also decide where the light comes from. So usually light falls from the left, as everywhere, you know, in the in the colleges. So we add some rows. Color in it. it. It's quite bright, isn't it? Why? It's, it's not. It's, it's just. It's intense. It's okay because um, it's quite easy to amortize, to extinguish this um, brightness later, than to fire it up again. Any stroke on white canvas seems like being quite dark, uh, and it, it's it's normal. It's okay. 
uh, these tints are not dirty, they are, they are, they are nice. Later, when we have all canvas done, this color will uh, work in the right way, will function in the right way. When you start working, you should work quite fast. You may add some, um, well, some spontaneous strokes. Don't think about this. Later, you will um, kind of include these strokes in the whole painting. You see, here we'll have a kind of a uh, greenish tint. We don't see it on the photo, but um, it happens to be quite picturesque when you, when you paint the canvas. Well, if, if it were my painting, I would also uh, use this um, the excessive paint from the brush on the other uh, parts, the canvas. First of all, you save the paintings. On the other hand, uh, it's just you are harmonizing the the whole painting so that the colors are coinciding in tints. Make it uh, with uh, with care, surely. Well, the whole painting works like this. You need to make a fine undercoat and to harmonize it. Um, these dark strokes, uh, we need to we need to put them to kind of give some tension to the painting. Uh, to and somehow to give the border. Mm -hmm. Uh, now we just try to make a flower. We will not work it till the end. Uh, we will not uh, add too many details in it. But we'll just make the kind of image. Remember about our central point. Well, peonies, um, they're quite chaotic and seems like they're shapeless, not like, for instance, chrysanthemums or some other flowers. But um, you don't have to put the, the petals at random. You should remember about the center point. You may enrich your paintings with uh, other colors, like orange, yellow. Anyway, the colors that you're using now, they should not be close to whitewash. Um, they should be darker with addition of some color. Uh, just have forgotten that we better start here with the big petals because uh, lay, otherwise we would cover them up and we would not have um, uh, a chance to paint them thoroughly. Yeah, we, 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 sh we should start from them. It's just, first of all, just give a kind of shade and light. We, we can see right now that um, the flower is lacking some kind of overtones. It, it's lacking the shades. So we may apply it here just some overtones without any reason, without any logic, just spontaneous. So here's the biggest battle. Um, it would be more useful if we had a kind of background already. But we'll make it later. Okay, so let's suppose that we had a 
background here, a dark greenish one, not plain green. You understand that you, you cannot put just plain colors. They should be complicated, they should be uh, rich in tints. Mm -hmm. So we put the background in, th in a thin layer. So let's suppose, and then you take an um, almost dry brush and you see, uh, you see that um, I just took a piece of this um, dark color and I just make the almost clear petal and you should make it in one stroke. If you apply the brush two or three times, you will not ha have this clearness and you will not have this natural effect. No fibers, you will see. <coughs> so, in this way, we just collect the flower. I don't think about in what direction it grows. Um, just kind of at a guess, as you feel, no. turn on your intuition. Mm -hmm. Very nice brush, by the way. Uh, this kind of brush, it is um, on sale. Uh, it's quite soft and very comfortable to work with. Somewhere you may take thick colors so that you feel the stroke, especially when you're working with the central, with the main objects on the painting. And don't forget to, to harmonize, to soften the shape. You should take a kind of a almost dry soft brush and stamp the strokes you should not make it everywhere but somewhere where you where you feel like you need it so you feel the, fl the flower and you make it till the end so Natasha please take a brush and try to make the flower on your own so you have warm colors inside, almost hot. And what about the flowers, the, the petals, sorry, over there? They will be kind of a greenish tint. You just add some, some green color in the same mix of colors. Bright flowers, they usually have some green tints in the petals. Uh, over here you, you, you made it right, so you took bold open color, almost without whitewash. These colors are all very good for painting. They're not like in the real life that not photographic. If you paint too thick, you may um, you may get rid of the excessive paint with the tissue. So this first layer should be thin. The tints are kind of complicated. Nice, mature tints. Try to avoid these white spots, uh, just push harder. Смотрите, Наташа, тут, да, правильно, не обязательно регулярно делать все вот синим таким вот, 
какими-то такими... And разными, here for the background you also такими, may add some other tints да? in this будет. color. Ну, вот, вот просто Don't make like a straight вот line. Вот, you may just mm, вот вот push the вот strokes as you feel it. The peonies, it's a kind of um, shapeless flower. They have, um, they are kind of mossy, ragged. Mm -hmm. You should constantly bear in mind the color relations when you are drawing. So here we'll have another uh, peony. Okay, let's start again. You just take a rounded brush. And, well, I, shall I start from the center? Well, you better start from the big petals on the edge. Just add some oil. Uh, you take some warm color. Like here, um, not like the, like here. We just shall we add some mauve or rose tint in it? When we start putting white strokes, we this undercoat will work out. In a, in a right way. We just need um, warm, white, close to white color. We slightly touch the background. Don't make it two or three times. And you see when you have this kind of indefinite mixed tints, you should take care of them. Do not touch them again. This is a very nice combination. So let's leave it like this on the lower part of flower. And then we'll have the lighter part on the upper mm -hmm. surface of the flower. What is important is that um, you, as the artist, you can um, kind of exaggerate the nature. You can amplify the colors. What is the rule is that you should not amplify green and blue colors. All the rest you can exaggerate. It's just in order not to make paintings too cold. Mm -hmm. uh, the paintings should be warm enough. And the greenish and bluish colors, they only kind of underline these uh, warm tints. First, you try to find some petals. Don't use too much white wash. Just um, make a kind of a medium um, level from the darker, from the darkest place to the uh, brightest. Well, I'm afraid I will spoil the undercoat. Well, you are still learning in this direction, and here I do not know how to put this stroke. Uh, you see that the color is quite um, plain, just add some other uh, tints in it. Do not rub too much with the uh, paintbrush over your canvas. You see that um, flower painting should be natural. You see the beautiful fibers that you have, the beautiful tints on petals. This is the way it should be.
You see these two strokes? They just, I, I'm sure you would agree with me. These two are very beautiful ones. But if you add the third and the fourth stroke like this, you will not see their beauty anymore. They would lose their value. So, um, would you let me do it so that we make it faster? Don't um, say, don't try to save too much oil. You may apply some more colors, some more oil. Just get some colors that you have um, that you have left from flower paintings and also apply it to the background do not rub the canvas the canvas with um, paintbrush just make it in one stroke um, here we'll have the leaves, so we'll mix green and brown colors, not just plain green again, as well, just the same. Uh, on one part of brush I have the, f the, uh, the brighter color, the lighter, sorry, and on the other part I'll ha I have the darker one. And I don't look uh, on the photo anymore. When you work with the photo, um, you don't have to over over dramatize it. When I started painting, I tried to make an exact copy of the photo of the nature. And it's not very good because um, the photo is sharp, is harsh. And the painting should be mild and soft. You see that the painting is literally asks for um, for these darker tints, just with gold, alizarin, violet. And here you also just add some tint inside, as if um, somewhere deep there you have another flower. Don't think over it. Um, you just have to be brave and bold and feel free. And then you'll have a nice painting. Now we need to work uh, with those flowers. They will be rosy. So, basically, we work with alizarins, but when we compare, for instance, two colors, the one could be colder, the other could be warmer, but basically alizarins, this is the uh, cold tint, these are the cold tints. So, I will not have a very bright color. But pay attention, don't worry, we just need to paint the flower right now, we can use thicker colors, just some couple of strokes over there and over here uh, in a pastel way, we don't need to paint thin now. Oh, I, I'm so afraid to spoil it. I'm afraid I would, I could not uh, put those petals like... Okay, nice one. 
Ну вот отлично, смотрите. It is seen as the battle. Более-менее читается. Это уже не лезть. So this one should be darker or the same? Or just a little bit darker? Немножко темнее нужно. Давайте, you смотрите, а, нет, не, don't не have to add синее, any color in it. You may just uh, soak the brush, dry it a little bit with the да, tissue, and extinguish this, this lightness. А вот этот листок мы оставим вообще на потом, да? Да, это можно потом. Можно вот еще. Вот эти вот, вот эти вот, они все немножко боковые, как бы получается. Brush вот here вот in another direction because Знаете, this flower is kind of turned да, взял, вот to the right. Типа, um, well, no, here we will we will а, just да, take another brush. I call it uh, fish tail. Oh, I've seen it uh, during the workshop. Yes, that's right. This is the, the brush with, um, that gives you two strokes. What is good about this brush is that you control only one part of the brush and the other one, the, the second stroke, happens to be a kind of spontaneous and very natural. Uh, and it's always good to have something spontaneous and natural in your paint. Over here you add some mauve, some violet tints. A very nice habit, by the way, to work through the whole painting, not in one corner of it. So you're working on the outline, make it a little bit sharper. Okay, so far it will be like this now we need to remove this oil that we don't need here just apply the tissue you see how much of it we had then you just soften the, the silhouette, but don't um, work till the dirty tints, we don't need them. And here we'll have warm petals inside. <coughs> Though we didn't, <laughs> we didn't settle where the light comes from, whether we have a sunny day or not very sunny. Okay. I don't look at the nature, at the model. I just kind of feel the flower and work with it. Mm. I'm adding some spontaneous strokes to it. They're absolutely <laughs> illogical. And sometimes in the sun, when the peony is mature enough, uh, it has a very warm, almost hot color inside. So we may just kind of give a hint to our beholder that this peony is mature. Uh, a good advice for you would be to use a big brush so that you would not uh, have a 
have the lines, but uh, you could work with wide strokes. Mm -hmm. And when you work with big brush, finally, you have quite the colorific, um, quite colorific stroke, quite colorific uh, effect at the end. You just touch the canvas, you do not try to make the line, you do not continue the stroke, just one touch. Uh, could could we also uh, touch this petal over there, like this? Here we should have a warm color. Okay, let's leave it like this. We better leave it like this. Uh, maybe it's um, even more interesting to leave it like with understatement. And don't work with this brush when you're painting the uh, big surfaces. It's just for final details. So here we make a kind of environment it's just inexplicable you just have to follow your intuition as far as this flower is kind of uh, subordinate it will be a little bit um, mossy and not not that detailed Sometimes you just need a couple of touches, a couple of strokes. It should not be very, uh, very well worked out. Sometimes um, some strokes are enough to give the beholder a hint that there is a flower. You see these kind of details, they should be used moderately. You just make some strokes, two, three, not more, otherwise the whole painting would be kind of striped. Very nice yellow tint. Sienna, uh, the combination of um, yellow, mauve, and sienna is just wonderful, very natural. Oh, just let, let's. Um, I'm reminding myself where the flower outline lies. Forget about bold green color. You just need to give a hint that this is green color. And also finally at the end you may add some green greenish tint tints just to fire up your painting to give to give it um, kind of brightness. You see that um, this white color just kind of mixing with the undercoat and we have a very beautiful combination at the end.
показываем, знаете, вот уже напряжение. Over here you should kind of underline and demonstrate some tension, some uh, movement of the flower. Можно немножко обобщить вот это вот. If you see that the flower, that the color is too bold, you may just um, take some whitewash and you just kind of extinguish this um, color, just make it a little bit less bright. Well, um, this is the. These are the ripe peonies. Mature peony. It's quite chaotic. As roses, the young rose. Um, it's kind of tense, and it's. Um, bouncing but when the rose comes out when the, all the petals are еще такой важный момент я не знаю как вот такие углы забивать каким цветом you have ripe rose the same is with peony вот чувствуешь что сочетается и забиваешь как-то немножко you see that we work with uh, background as well uh, we work with the same colors as we used when painting flowers themselves. We are kind of harmonizing the painting. Well, once you feel that it's very well combined with the whole with the whole picture you have, with the whole painting, you just make the background. When the painting is uh, made with with atmosphere, with mood, we you you have the drive for it. This of uh, the final result will have the same energy as you had when you were painting it. So paint with pleasure, paint with energy. Well, when I come back home, I'll try to paint just some sa well similar paintings uh, um, again and again. Don't try to paint the same. Well, not the same, but similar, let's say, because um, I need to fix the technique and um, to settle how to how how the painting is created, how the painting like this is created. And then I'll have this kind of freedom, this energy. Make, uh, use as wide palette as you can. The range of color should be very wide. Use all your imagination and all the spectrum. You see that I don't make the line, not the stroke is short, I just touch the canvas. Touching the uh, canvas with, uh, with paintbrush slightly and I, um, I hold the paintbrush um, at the right angle to the canvas. When you when you got rid of all the white spots and you have the the, uh, the background done, um, you could feel already that um, where you lack some tints, uh, where you should correct them a little bit. I usually to to check. Um, my painting up, I used this application on my iPad mm -hmm. and with 
you, you see uh, no mistakes, no whitewash, but you see, you can see that over there, uh, the painting lacks some kind of uh, shade. But basically, um, the painting is good. This painting is good. With the brushes edge, you may add some other details that are that could seem illogical. But this is what painting is about. At the same time, don't make the painting too spotty. Otherwise, at the end, you will have a patchwork painting. Really, when you... <laughs> well... Uh, when you're on it, sometimes you just forget about the whole composition. Then you come back to it and you have a kind of a carpet in front of you. So, um, be careful and uh, you, sh you should know when, when you should stop. Very good method as well is to use uh, the vertical strokes. They just um, kind of soften the, all the strokes and they, does not, they do not disturb the flowers, the whole composition, and the brush should be dry. So you should, um, you should remove the, the color from it, the colors from it. If you don't, if you have some excessive paint at some places, you may also remove it with the brush. Over here, we also can mellow the strokes a little bit. And we may take the thin brush and add some details to this flower. As far as this flower is almost white, we can add some green tint in it. It's quite common. And over here we just make the, the center line, the pivot of the flower. If you don't guess the direction, uh, the flower would look unnatural. Over here you may, you may also add some thin details. Well, in reality, uh, such flower would not exist, but this is not reality, it's painting, it's art. And at the end it, it looks very picturesque. Don't forget about the overtones and undertones. In paintings, everything exists by means of these undertones. You may exaggerate it even a little bit. Especially the white uh, surfaces, they uh, take these overtones. 
over here you see that the um, rose peony is quite close to the white one, so we should put some uh, rose overtone on it. And over the, there you see that we lack some shade. Uh, we'll make it a little bit colder than the flower itself. Um, very nice tint of shade. Well, when I studied at the design faculty, we had very, uh, very, a lot of coloring work at chromatics discipline. Okay, I can see that actually the artist lives and lives in you and. You could be an artist. We just need to polish the technique a little bit. Uh -huh, <laughs> And now we can get uh, we can get down to these um, unfolded flowers. You see that we have a couple of them over here. The button of the flower. It's better to do it with uh, with flat brush. You just. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Make a mix of colors, but don't mix it till the end. And you take the flat brush and you paint these leaves and button. And then you have um, tension and uh, dynamics on canvas. Just several touches over here, over there. You may just try some, and if um, some stroke would not suit you, would not satisfy you at the end, you may just remove it with a palette knife. So, the variety of tints should be everywhere on your painting, on the background, on the leaves, on petals, on flowers, everywhere. Some of the flowers, some of the peonies, they have a kind of red tint right inside on the petals. This is a very delicate moment. You should not um, add too, too much uh, red spots on it. Otherwise, you will have a kind of the painting with smallpox. A couple of such, uh, couple of such uh, strokes would be enough. Yeah, you, you got it, I, I hope. Yes, sure. And at this, at this step, we don't need the, um, the, the model, we don't need the photo. You don't need to tread upon something. You just give your paintings whatever it asks for, whatever it requests. The photo would be even, uh, you know, bad for you. You just, you may... Um, 
uh, come back and look up at the photo uh, only if you need to check up the direction of some flower, for instance. But you don't need it to guess the tints. Don't forget uh, that the, the peony should be a little bit ragged, so you just add some dark strokes on the petals. Now we take a white brush and we finalize the flowers with it. We add the volume to our um, to the petals, just giving a hint to our audience that the flower. Uh, has this volume. By the way, it's uh, very useful for artists to work with wide brush and it develops your movement. But when you have the thin, small brush, you just work in one direction. Whilst working with a wide brush really develops you as an artist. You should work with, uh, with this instrument until the moment um, when it can actually work. And don't forget to add some green tints, uh, some green strokes to the white flowers. Use the edge of the brush You may also accentuate the overtones somewhere just to make the painting a little bit to make it closer to reality чтобы не пестрило, не обидно тоже, конечно. Конечно, нельзя все растушевывать, то, тоже тогда это плохо. Что-то вот нужно чувствовать, где нужно оставить. And then uh, you take dry brush and stamp a little bit, just somewhere, not everywhere. You should feel it. Да, нам не нужна ботаническая. 